Welcome to my course electrochemical energy storage and uh, we are now in module number 5 where uh, we are talking about the characteristics of commercial lithium ion cells and uh, this is lecture number 24 where I will be describing the fabrication of lithium ion cell uh, particularly the laboratory based cell fabrication uh, will be uh, described uh, because uh, it is difficult to get the exact roll to roll processing of uh, uh, commercial lithium ion cell, but uh, this will give you a vivid idea that how the cells are uh, manufactured. So, the practical aspects of the battery design uh, that will uh, will just uh, talk few words and cylindrical cell manufacturing process uh, this will be mostly be laboratory based uh, process which usually we do in our laboratory then uh, that includes uh, electrode manufacturing process then uh, electrode manufacturing included uh, the preparation of the electrode slurry then how they are coated then what is the need of uh, calendaring or roll press then uh, they are cut according to the size, then there is a vacuum drying process involved and then finally, they are assembled. So, in terms of winding, so we call it a winding to form a jelly roll to put that uh, inserted after uh, cathode uh, and anode tab welding and the bidding process, then uh, how the electrolyte injection process. Uh, is done and then cathode tap welding, then crimping, inspection, washing, uh, this will be covered. So, the manufacturing process uh, in short. So, when we talk about the cylindrical cell, the model that is uh, quite uh, important um, and adopted uh, globally is 18650, 18 stands for the diameter of this casing and 650 stands for the height which is 650 millimeter. So, as you can see that uh, there is a uh, gasket plus uh, top can, the bottom is completely sealed. So, this is hermetically sealed once you put the anode cathode etcetera inside it and electrolyte. And um, then there is a vent here. So, if the gas formation is there takes place uh, during the formation cycle or during the cell uh, operation, then uh, this vent valve uh, whenever the pressure is built it goes out. So, as I told the diameter is 18 millimeter, cathode um, usually is uh, 130 micron. Uh, it is generally thicker than anode which is uh, 110 micro micrometer and you know the why it is so because cathode is having the lower capacity. Uh, so, um, it will uh, need to have more uh, material uh, thicker material so that it uh, matches the capacity of the graphitic base uh, anode in particular. Uh, width of this uh, strips of electrode um, anode is 59 millimeter which will once you wind it it will go inside this and uh, cathode usually kept at uh, 58 um, this is also having a reason because uh, cathode contain the uh, lithium part so if the anode is slightly larger then it will catch all those lithium. Separator is wrapped around the cathode and anode to prevent the short circuiting and uh, each electrode uh, has different values of inner and outer coating length. So, both sides of uh, this uh, current collector is coated and the uncoated collector is located at the outermost cathode or anode and that is uh, uh, basically finished with this sealing cell. So, this is just to take the connection out from the current collector. So, now you can understand that these are the physical design uh, factor for uh, making cylindrical cells 
and now uh, we will uh, go step by step how to make this cell. So, the cell manufacturing process uh, this uh, the first step is electrode manufacturing and that constitutes several steps starting with mixing, mixing the active material with binder and uh, conducting uh, agent to form a slurry. Then they are coated mostly by using tip casting, then uh, they are roll pressed. Uh, so, that the tap density is increased and uh, the electrode is properly adhered on the current collector. Then they are slitted in the form of the exact length as well as the width, so that it can be wind properly and fill into the can. And uh, after slitting they are vacuum dried, so there is no trace water is absorbed during this fabrication process. So, uh, for preparing this electrode slurry, uh, the machineries that is used, a typically machinery is uh, shown here. So, MTI is a company, US based company, they make all kind of battery manufacturing equipment. So, you can go to their site mtixtl.com, which I have given at the end of the lecture. And this is one of the equipment, how it functions. There is a YouTube link given. So, if you click on the link, you will see that how exactly the mixing is done. So, first a binder solution is produced that is by dissolving PVDF binder in its uh, solvent in methyl pyrolidon, then active material and conductive agents, they are homogeneously dispersed to prepare a homogeneous slurry. The process that can be divided into binder solution preparation then binder solution transfer um, and uh, slurry preparation and slurry transfer. So, usually the slurry storage process it is prepared, the prepared slurry is pumped to the storage mixture and it is continuously start so that uh, it does not get hardened and uh, uh, does not get agglomerated. So, please watch the video to see that uh, what is the consistency of the slurry because it should wet on the current collector properly. So, the viscosity is one of the major factor and the uh, wettability of this particular ink, the slurry onto the current collector that is also important. Then the next step is uh, uh, electrode uh, coating and uh, this is the machinery that is used and it is semi-automatic. And the principle uh, is described in this small machine. So, you know that there is a chuck here, which is having a provision for um, holding the current collector, which is laid on top of this and uh, the vacuum is applied. So, it is firmly adhered here and this is a doctor's blade. So, in the doctor's blade, the separation between the blade and this electrode current collector that you can adjust and that will basically uh, basically fix your coating thickness and uh, you can change the scanning speed. So, it can be very fast, it can be slow and also you can heat it uh, so that the solvent can be evaporated to make it dry it right there. So, these are the things all these things are here also how it works again you can see in this YouTube video. So, the ink is first put here whatever we prepared in the last slide and on top of the current collector this doctor's blade they scan here and get a fine coating uh, on the surface and you can control the coating thickness. So, during coating process the slurry is passed through the coater head and metal current collector is coated in a given pattern here is a flat pattern. And, uh, um, thickness is controlled by controlling the blade separation between uh, the doctor's uh, assembly and the current collector. And then it is uh, um, unwinding, coating, drying, density measurement and also winding because it is a roll to roll process. It is not a single strip being coated here. So, for example, your cathode is uh, cathode material is uh, kept here 
and here somewhere the doctors played are there and uh, this is being coated and going to the other side and winding up. So, you get a continuous roll to roll coating process. So, the coating process is same for both cathode, usually it is done on aluminum or anode that is copper. The unwinding process prepares a metal current collector or one side coated electrode for coating and then again it is put back and the other side is also coated so that you have more active material to increase the capacity of the cylindrical cell. So, after you prepare the slurry from the mixing process passes through the cutter head where from this uh, ink is uh, put on the current collector and it is coated in a uh, constant thickness and the drying process that removes the solvent and moisture and density that is the thickness measurement process. Um, so, if you measure the thickness you can have the aerial density uh, of the slurry that is coated on the electrode. So, that is the coating process that is followed. Do check this video so that you will have a um, better idea. <coughs> Then as I said, uh, we need to pass it through a roll press, so that uh, due, to, due to this rolling process, um, the dried electrode, uh, they are pressed together properly. So, there is no air gap between the current collector and the electrode material. So, they are properly adhered, they are not fully dried yet, so that if you roll press it at hot condition, then you get a better adhesion. And uh, this is also a roll to roll process, maybe not the same equipment that you can use, but this is for the laboratory equipment only a single strip that you can do. But usually this is also a roll to roll process, so when one roll getting pressed and this is winded up in the other side, then you reverse it and do the same process for the other coated side. So, preheating as I said is important that warms the electrode before insertion to the roll, so as to press the electrode well and uh, there is a cleaning process involved that removes the impurity from the electrode surface with a cleaning non oven kind of uh, uh, thing before winding this electrode. So, electrode is clean enough. Usually all these operations that is done in a dry room with having a relative humidity uh, as low as 1 percent. So, uh, moisture absorption from the normal ambient is almost uh, very, very limited. On top of that you are vacuum drying it uh, whenever it is required. So, trying to get the moisture uh, absorbed in this electrode they are really marginal. If they do then you will have to pay the price and your electrochemical characteristics will get uh, um, deteriorated. <coughs> After that, this is the slitting process that I was mentioning. So, the electrode is cut here, so that you can see there are blades here and you have this big electrode coated on aluminum as you can see. And here, uh, if you can change this separation, this separation you can cha change and then uh, you pass it here, then this strip will be formed, right. This strip will be formed and the length and the width is important for winding, so that you will have to put it inside the uh, inside the uh, case. So, this slitting is important and once you slit it, uh, again you will have to clean it at every stage, because uh, although it is kept in a clean environment, but uh, uh, some material can uh, get uh, stuck on onto it and that will deteriorate the uh, battery uh, process, I mean battery uh, performance, so that you will have to do that. Cleaning is very important. And then it is vacuum dried. So, in vacuum drying process, the electrode is wound on a reel and uh, uh, put in a vacuum chamber. So, moisture and excess stress that is involved uh, due to this rolling uh, that are removed to through this thermal treatment. Now, you are in a stage to assemble the cell. So, what you have done? You have done something like this, an electrode which is coated and then you have slit it, 
then you have roll press it so that the tap density is in increased and then uh, also you have uh, connected uh, a small tap because you will have to uh, connect it with the casing the battery casing right positive and negative and that eventually you will have to mark. So, a small tab is there and that tab is basically connected with this uh, with the uh, can. So, that you will have to do and this is the machine that is uh, winding machine semi automatic one where you can see the separator is connected here and the electrode is put uh, from this side and it will just wind it will just wind like this and then it will form something like this. You can see this tab is connected here, this tab is connected here, ultimately it is coming out and one tab is here and another tab is here. So, accordingly you will have to wind it and this is called the jelly roll. So, this jelly roll you can insert into this can right? and then eventually you will have to tab weld this to the bottom side and the top one is to the top side. So, the process of uh, uh, the remaining part which we call assemble is winding, then jelly roll press and insert, then tap welding, then can cap welding. So, on top of that this can cap is also there. Then we will have to do electrolyte injection and then there is something called ball welding here and finally, the bottom plate winding. So, the description is given there, I am not going line by line, you will have to see this video and the process, the individual process, whatever I explained that is all written there. So, go through it and along with the video, you will be able to understand the operation of this winding process, which is very important. You remember that the diameter of the jelly roll should be exactly fitted into, into the can. So, otherwise, uh, if the rolling diameter is more, then it will uh, not be uh, going th inside the can and if it is less, then the battery if you shake, it will have some kind of sound and you will not like it. So, after the jelly roll you have inserted, there is a process called tab welding or this is sometimes called bidding process also. So, what is done here that uh, the jelly roll is inserted um, uh, in the can then the anode part, the um, tab, it is coming from the anode, that welding process bends the anode tab for the welding to the floor of the can. So, usually the positive is uh, the top part and negative is the bottom part. So, this tab which is connected is slightly bent and then it goes uh, to the uh, floor of the can then bidding or sometimes we call it grooving process that is done by this machine. Again, you see the uh, this thing, this uh, uh, link. So, in a cylindrical can on the top surface, you have put the uh, jelly roll inside it. So, if you just reverse it, the jelly roll will come out. So, in order to avoid it, you have a grooving. So, you slightly reduce the diameter at the neck. So, the jelly roll is stick there and inside there is a gap. So, through this gap you can uh, weld it through the bottom can and also the top can in a subsequent process. So, you will have to see the video as I said step by step so that you can understand the actual process. It is difficult to explain it unless if I can show it, it is much better, but at least in the video we will get some idea out of it. Then uh, we will go for the electrolyte injection process because we will have to fill electrolyte inside. So, this machine is used again the operation is there in this link. So, electrolyte injection, in, injection the internal pressure after injecting the electrolyte should be kept lower than the atmospheric pressure. So, the uh, electrolyte will be sucked in and this will be properly wetting uh, the electrode material separator inside the can. Uh, after the electrolyte injection, electrolytes surround the cathode tap and the groove area is wiped off that is very important because electrolyte can corrode because outside is uh, in air ambient, 
after vacuum if it spills off and you will be using this battery so it can rust the stainless steel shell so it is very important to properly uh, wash the electrolyte that is coming out of the system and a specified amount of electrolyte that is put inside the groove uh, this type of equipment that uh, uh, actually works both in case of power cell and cylindrical cell because this is just used to put the electrolyte inside the can or inside the pouch so no separate equipment is required for doing this then uh, we are in a process to do the cathode tap welding um, and then crimping and followed by the washing process. So, the cathode tap welding process includes the welding of the cathode tap and the crimping process that applies pressure to the top part of the battery. Then they are uh, inspected by the x-ray inspection that basically examines the internal electrode arrangement after assembly and checks for any kind of defect that may have. The washing process is uh, followed by that it is to remove the electrolyte and other impurities from the battery surface. The battery is then dried to eliminate any kind of moisture in it and finally, the battery is imprinted you need to uh, have the name of the manufacturer, the batch uh, number and what kind of uh, uh, voltage for example, here the capacity will get 2600 uh, milliampere hour, the voltage is uh, 3.7 volt nominal, you can charge it up to 4.2 volt, this is the batch number and it is 18650 kind of cell. And finally, a, a, a plastic uh, sleeve is there, you see that this plastic sleeve is printed and then there is a separate machine, uh, I did not include it here. So, that this uh, stainless steel can the whole assembly you can put therein. So, this kind of cell you can see in Amazon, if you give the SARS 18650 um, lithium ion battery cell in Amazon, you will see that this is available, a different source you will get this kind of battery. So, they are manufactured in this way. Now, the cylindrical cell manufacturing process separately I will ask you to go through this video to know the function of each individual equipment be that crimping tool, um, tab welding and uh, grooving machine, uh, electrolyte filling machine, coating machine, winding machine and this uh, is the link for the video where the cylindrical cell manufacturing process can be found and uh, this sh shown equipment here in this video that may not be exactly identical what you see here uh, individual one, maybe some other model has been used. So, do not get confused about it that I do not see that this particular model, but it it is function wise it is operating this is uh, having the same function. So, it may have a different model. Uh, the process may look little bit different, but you will get uh, a vivid idea that how the cell uh, is manufactured in, in, in the prototype condition. Uh, in the same uh, site, the website which I will be giving, uh, you will find that the roll to roll process machinery is also there. So, spend some time to look through those videos look through those machineries which is not the laboratory based prototype, but it is for a mass manufacturing. So, you will get a reasonable good idea. So, there are few companies, uh, MTI is one of them, Gelon, G E L O N that is another one, uh, Hussein, uh, a Japanese company one of the oldest one uh, that is one and there is one. Uh, uh, Korean company called Sem Yung. So, these are the companies who do this type of uh, equipment and roll to roll process. They will come and install the whole battery manufacturing unit if you wish to. Very, very expensive, they charge lot of us and we need that our country should have this kind of manufacturing process. So, that in future we are really uh, honored this uh, uh, make in India 
uh, initiative. So, <clears throat> after you do the uh, forming process, then you need to uh, uh, sorry after after you uh, do the assembly process, then you have a formation process and this formation process you remember that uh, we do uh, because um, the testing of the battery, this is divided into activation, removal of out of spec batteries and capacity selection. So, you will have to see that uh, based on your calculation of irreversible capacity, length of the anode and length of the cathode, whether you have really getting the capacity. So, this is uh, the steps that are involved. You see that 10 steps are involved aging, then um, open circuit voltage test, then you have to charge it and then again you will have to age it, then again you do the OCB test, then again you age it, then uh, again you test the OCB, then you test the capacity, then appearance of the battery whether it is solen or uh, something has happened that you will have to test. Uh, so, there are 8 to 10 processes that will be this formation process. Then the assembled battery is stabilized through charging, aging and discharging. Then ACI layers are formed on the anode surface during initial charging as you know. The faulty batteries can be detected by measuring the open circuit voltage. So, open circuit voltage usually is in the range of 2.5 to 3 volt. So, if it is bad then you can throw it out. And the main cause of faulty batteries is internal short circuit, the tap that you are um, putting it with the can. So, if there, that is malfunctioning, your equipment is malfunctioned, then anode and cathode will be short circuited. The copper and uh, uh, copper and aluminum, they are in close proximity, not like the beaker photograph what I have shown that this is anode, this is cathode, this is separator, they are all now in the form of a jelly roll. There is every possibility if your separator is little bit away and your cathode is uh, touching uh, anode part, then it is gone, this is internal short circuit. So, this uh, kind of uh, precautionary measure you will have to take. So, <coughs> this is in a very short, I tried to explain the uh, cylindrical cell manufacturing process and uh, you are supposed to see this website for cylindrical cell preparation and that this is part of your study, mat study material. And uh, along with that I uh, named couple of companies like Hussein, um, like uh, Gelon, uh, Semiyung. Uh, so, you can go to their site as well to check the uh, equivalent things, equivalent equipment. And uh, in this book, there is a good description of cylindrical cell preparation uh, by Park. This book also you can consider and this is a very good handbook. I am telling several times uh, for lithium ion pack battery pack design, very easy to read book and you will get a vivid idea how to make it. There is another book which is a do it yourself type. Uh, for the battery that is still better that is for the novice who does not know anything about it they also can uh, prepare the cell uh, actually they are purchasing the cell and making the battery module for different purpose so i will introduce that book as well in the future classes so in this particular lecture we talked about cylindrical cell manufacturing process and i will uh, tell you to go through this uh, videos and it consists of electro electrode manufacturing process which uh, contains preparation of electrode slurry, electrode coating, then roll processing process, roll pressing process, then slitting process, then finally vacuum drying process. Then after that there is an assembly process which includes winding, then jelly roll is inserted inside, then electrolyte is injected, then cathode tap welding takes place. Uh, crimping takes place to make the battery. So, during crimping it is hermetically sealed and finally, there is a forming process uh, to check the individual battery using a multi-challenge battery analyzer and thank you for your interest.